Hey everybody, Dennis Stanley here with Respiratory Sensei, and you may know me from Lindsay Jones. Today we're talking about a very nerdy calculation that's done for respiratory therapists called the Oxygen Index. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because it is a formula and a value that could be seen on the NBRC exam. At least the NBRC says they test on this. So we want to know how to calculate it, but also what it means, and certainly what we would do about it and a certain value. If the value is high, how would we treat the patient? All right, so let's take a look at the oxygen index. All right, come with me, as the Japanese would say, are wa mimashou. All right. We're here with the oxygen index, and we want to learn how to calculate it. But first, let me just paint in your mind what we're actually calculating. When you think of somebody that's on a ventilator, and this will relate to only ventilator patients in respiratory therapy, one of the things that we're trying to achieve is a very specific PaO2 or a very specific oxygen level on the blood gas. The question that the oxygen index answers is what does it cost in order to get that specific PaO2? In other words, we're having to use FiO2 and mean airway pressure and PEEP and lots of different things on the ventilator. And therefore, to get a specific PaO2 is going to come at a specific cost. And oxygen index is really looking at the cost to get a specific PaO2. And so that's what we want to take a look at. Well, in order to do so, the first thing I want to do is kind of uh, redirect your attention to something else. And that is, what if we were to look at something, we'll make this up, called a pay index. And I were to ask you, well, how much do you get paid? In other words, what's the resulting pay you get for a specific amount of work and a job difficulty? So if I said, how much do you make? You might say, well, I make $500 a week. I don't know, I'm just making that up. Now, I could think that that's good pay or bad pay, but I'd have to ask you a few more questions. And one of the questions I'd have to ask you is, well, how many hours a week do you have to work to get that pay. The other question I'd certainly want to ask you is, hey, how difficult is that job? Are you digging ditches or are you sitting in a nice air conditioned office? All right, and so I could calculate your pay index by looking at the difficulty of the job or the cost or what it requires of you in order to make that $500 per week. All right, and so I'm going to call that the pay index. Well, that's really what the auction index is well as we take a peek at that. So auction index is going to be looking at what is the cost in the numerator here. We're going to be looking at two things. We're going to be looking at the FiO2 or the auction percentage that you have to use. Is it low or is it high? And then we're also going to be looking at the amount of peak peak pressure, the pressure, but we're going to talk about it in terms of mean airway pressure. Be careful here. You might see MAP sometimes is also talking about mean arterial pressure. That's a hemodynamic value. We're talking about mean arterial, excuse me, mean airway pressure here. And so the cost is, do I have to use a lot of mean airway pressure? Do I, do I have to expose your body to a lot of negative mean airway pressure in order to get that PO2 that I want to? So that's what we're really calculating. So in the numerator, we're going to take the O2 percent and times it by the mean airway pressure and then to know if that's good or not we're going to divide it by the resulting PaO2. So it's a very simple formula. We're going to look at its values and what it means but just remember this we're calculating the cost it takes to get to a specific PaO2 and that cost is going to come in the form of some ventilator setting. Keep in mind also that as we look at cost the two things that we're worried about is having to use elevated levels of oxygen the higher we have to use, the more dangerous that could be for the patient on any number of scenes. For instance, high oxygen can promote ARDS. High oxygen can also cause oxygen toxicity. So it's a negative thing to have to use a lot of oxygen to ventilate a patient and to give them the right PaO2. The other thing that we really care about is that when we expose the patient to a lot of airway pressure, that has a negative effect as well. Now, I won't go into this here a lot. I'll talk about this in hemodynamics, but let me just paint the picture for you in just a minute. If we have to give somebody a positive pressure breathing, remember, we're used to negative pressure breathing. We drop our diaphragm and then the air just comes in because we produce a negative pressure. But on a ventilator, we're having to positively push pressure in there. And when we do that, that pressure is going to go, of course, into our lungs with the air that we're putting in there. The air or the gas is going to stay in our lungs, but the pressure is actually going to go right through the tissues and it's going to go all over the inside of our body. In other words, it has influence. Well, if a lot of pressure will surround itself around some of our bigger veins that are trying to return that blood home to the right heart, 
then it has a tendency to nullify the pressure difference and that decreases the venous return or the venous blood flow. Now again, that's all covered in hemodynamics, but I just want you to know that when we use a lot of mean airway pressure, it comes at a cost. It decreases our blood flow or return back to the right heart. And if we have to use a lot of pressure, we're going to expose the patient to dangers like barotrauma, such as pneumothorax, and actually acute lung injury that can lead to things like ARDS. And that's why we care about understanding the cost in terms of the oxygen percentage and the mean airway pressure. We times those together to determine the cost and to see if it's worth it to get that index value, we're going to divide that by the PaO2. All right, with that in mind, let's take a peek at that. All right, to do that, we have to take a look at a patient. And I have some values here that I'll, I'll show you on the board. And the first thing I want you to know is that if you're on the NBRC exam, they're going to give you a lot of values in the question. And then your job is to identify those values needed for an oxygen index. So if you'll take a look at some of the values, we have something like pH here. And remember, we're not looking at pH. The formula requires O2% and the mean airway pressure and the PaO2. Therefore, we only have to know those three things. So if I go through the list, well, here's the PaO2. So I'll pick that number. That's important. In this case, it's going to be 100. And then we have the mean airway pressure. In this case, it's going to be 22. And then the last thing I need is the oxygen percent. Now, this one's tricky. If you're a respiratory therapist, you certainly know how to do this. They don't give us the oxygen in the percent form, but they do give us the FiO2. And that's the same as saying 30%. All right, and so we have all our numbers. Now all we have to do is substitute those in in order to, to progress towards the answer. All right, we're now going to look at another patient, and we're going to look at some different values. The first thing I'm going to do, just like I did just now a moment ago, is for this patient, I'm going to select their values. Now, I already know what I need to know. I need to know the mean airway pressure, the oxygen percent, and the PaO2. So let me select those values and then plug them in over here to do the actual calculation. All right, and so as we look at PaO2, there it is. So we have our PaO2, and that's going to be 70. Remember, the PaO2 is going to go in the denominator here, so I'm going to put 70 right here. And then I need to know the mean airway pressure, which is right here, and I need to know the oxygen percent. Remember, they have 0 0.40 because they're looking at FiO2. We're going to talk about them in terms of 40%. And so all I have to do is say that the mean airway pressure, which is 28, and I have to times that by 40, not 0.4, because we're going to be looking at the percent version of that. And as I do the math there, as you do this math, you can do 28 times 40 and then divide by 70. And then what you're going to get is a result of 16. And so our result here is 16. That's what our OI is, the oxygen index on this patient. Now, is that good or bad? Well, we don't know until we take a peek. We'll talk about the values in just a minute. But this person has an oxygen index of 16. All right, well, let's take a look at another patient. All right, here's another patient. First thing we're going to do is pick out our values. And, of course, we have a PO2 of 80 right there. And then the mean airway pressure is 42. And it's taking 60%. So let's just plug those values in. All right, the PaO2 always goes in the bottom. So we have got a PaO2 of 80. So we'll put that there. And then the mean airway pressure is 42. And then we're going to multiply that times 60%. All right, so now all we have to do is that math. We just go 42 times 60 and divided by 80. And we're going to get an oxygen index of 31.5. Or I might just say 32 just to round that up. All right, so this patient has an oxygen index of 32. All right, well, now let's take a look at another patient. Okay, here we are with patient number three. Now let's take a look at some of their values. Let's go ahead and pick those out. Well, first of all, we have a PO2 of 50. That's not very good, is it? We're not getting a very good PO2 of whatever it's costing. The PO2 is only 50. Should be 80 to 100 in the artery. So we know something's up already there. And then look, the mean airway pressure is 48. That's a lot of pressure. And so we have that. And then the FiO2 is 100. It's 1.0, but that's the same as saying 100%. So let's plug those in and figure out what the oxygen index is for this patient. All right, well, the PaO2 always goes in the bottom, and so we're getting a 50 here. And then the mean airway pressure is 48, and we're going to times that by 100. And then all we have to do now is to do that math, 48 times 100 divided by 50, so we can get an oxygen index. And what we get is an oxygen index of 96. 
Okay, that's the highest oxygen index that we've gotten so far, and that means that the cost for this patient to get just the PO2 of 50 is very high. What's the cost? 96. I always think of cost in money, so it's $96. But as we go back to the other one, remember the other one costs only $32, and the other one only cost us $16. Not really dollars, but you know what I mean. And so this is what we're calculating. We're actually just calculating the cost. Now that we've learned how to calculate the oxygen index, what are we to make of those values and what do we do for the patient? So now we're looking at interpretation where we label the patient as normal or problematic and then also what could we do if the patient is problematic with their oxygen index and what does that mean? Remember, the oxygen index is calculating the cost of getting a specific PaO2. And we've calculated our patients, so we'll take a peek at those in just a minute. But just so we understand, if we have an oxygen index of 20 or less, then that's going to be considered normal. That would be a patient of you and I that doesn't have lung disease. If we were to go on a ventilator, it would be pretty easy to get a PaO2 that we wanted to with very little mean airway pressure and very little oxygen percentage. But if the oxygen index is, rises above 30, then we're going to say you have some sort of acute lung injury. What that is, we don't know. We might have even caused the acute lung injury with our ventilation, or you may have come in that way. But we can just generally categorize you and say you have acute lung injury. But now take a peek that if we have an OI of greater than 40, we're going to say two things. One, that you do have an acute lung injury, but also you have advanced to the stage of what we call ARDS. So you have ARDS. And then of course, if you have ARDS, then I should be thinking I should use the ARDSnet protocol and I have permission to use a very drastic form of oxygenation called ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And that's when we start taking the blood out and rerouting it outside the body to use an artificial lung in order to give its oxygen. Well, so now here are the values. Let's take a peek at our patients. All right, well, first of all, if you remember, patient number one had an oxygen index of 16. And then we can look at our values here. Remember, we said if it's 20 or less, then the patient is basically normal. And so what we're going to do with this patient is that we're going to say the patient is basically normal because they have an oxygen index of less than 20. All right, now let's take a look at this patient. Patient number two had an oxygen index of 32. Now that's not below 20, but it's also not greater than 40, so it's kind of in that middle range. What we can conclude from this patient and from this data on this patient is that they have some sort of, of acute lung injury. What is it? We don't know. We just know that acute lung injury is beginning to happen in their life. And so that's how we can conclude from that patient. And then, of course, we have our last patient, patient number three. They had an oxygen index of 96. Now, if we look at our values, anything greater than 40, we're going to categorize that as ARDS. And so we can say about this patient that they have ARDS. And, of course, if they have ARDS, we should be using the ARDS net protocol. And so we'd want to be able to treat them. That protocol, of course, is going to include things like using lower tidal volumes or lower FiO2s and managing PEEP appropriately. So we just have to look at the protocol. All right. And then, of course, we also have permission to use something called ECMO or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Well, that's what we need to know about the oxygen index. Look at what we've determined. We use the formula to calculate the cost. Remember, oxygen index is a cost. The cost of achieving a certain PaO2 on the patient. And then depending on the value, we can categorize that patient as either normal or having an onset of acute lung injury or they have acute lung injury and it has advanced ARDS and we should treat them with the ARDSnet protocol. So on the NBRC exam, you can imagine what they could do with this. They could just give you an oxygen index and make sure you understand how to categorize the patient and what you should do for the patient or they may make you pick out the values and calculate the oxygen index yourself and then either give them the index number or also go from there and interpret the results and maybe even decide what you should be doing for the patient. Well, I hope that was helpful for you respiratory therapists who are preparing for the NBRC exam. You could also calculate the oxygen index really on a patient. If you have patients, you should do that. It might direct you on what you should do for the patient. We do mostly see it using in a nerdy situation specifically for the NBRC exam. I'm Dennis from Restorate Sensei. Don't forget, if you would please subscribe and like the video, let, him, let me know if I'm on the right track. And also notify and share this video uh, with others if you can and it really helps the channel. It helps us to reach more people. We hope to make the Restory Sensei channel
potential of bang up success and reach a lot of people and bring restorative therapy to the concepts, to the whole community, including not only to restorative therapists, but also to nurses. All right, thank you, and we'll see you next time. As the Japanese would say, Gambari Masho. Thank you.